and welcome to my YouTube channel. The topic of discussion is the role of the skin and mucous membranes in non-specific immunity. Non-specific immunity also referred to as innate immunity is usually the first line of defense against invading pathogens or disease causing microorganisms. This intact skin or the unbroken skin is usually the first point of contact with the invading microorganism. So it forms an effective mechanical barrier against such pathogens and foreign bodies. The epidermis consists of closely packed cells known as keratinocytes, which produce a protein known as keratin. Now, the, there's usually a layer of keratinized dead cells in the epi epidermis. And when microorganisms attach to this epidermal layer or the keratinized layer in the epidermis, they are continuously shed and removed from the skin. So microorganisms are still able to penetrate the intact skin through the sweat or sebaceous glands or through the hair follicles. However, the low pH of five and fatty acids present in the sweat and sebaceous secretions exert antimicrobial effects. And so such microorganisms or pathogens are easily destroyed. Sebaceous glands produce sebum, which forms a protective film over the skin surface. Lysozyme is an enzyme which destroys peptidoglycan present in the bacterial cell wall. Other components of the innate or non-specific immunity include the normal microbiota, which is also known as the resident microflora of the skin. This will make the nutrients unavailable to pathogens. Then you have the psoriasin, which has antibacterial properties. That is specifically, it destroys or kills bacteria or pathogenic uh, bacteria. Then you have the skin associated lymphoid tissue. Here you have a class of dendritic cells known as Legerhans cells. These are found in the dermis and they are known to identify or isolate the invading pathogen and keep them away from entering the bloodstream. They have the mucous membranes. The mucous membranes secrete mucus. And these mucus secretions form a protective covering of the digestive system, respiratory system, the urogenital system, and the conjunctiva. There is the, what is called the mucociliary escalator or a mobile or moving staircase to see. These consist of, is an apparatus that consists of ciliated cells and mucus. The mucus is produced by goblet cells. So, is able to, the mucus is able to trap particles containing 
pathogens or disease causing microorganisms and the continuous waving of the ciliated cells move the trapped particles containing the pathogens upwards and outwards of the respiratory tract. Coughing and other reflexes like sneezing also help to expel such trapped microorganisms. So microorganisms or pathogens are still able to escape and find their ways into the lungs. We also have the pulmonary macrophages waiting for them. And in the process of phagocytosis, the are uh, uh, eliminated or killed. You have the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, which forms an effective immune barrier against invading pathogens, made up of bronchial-associated lymphoid tissue and also the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, which is found in the pear patches and tonsils. The M cell has a large pocket of macrophages, B cells, and T cells. On identifying or recognition of a pathogen, which is now the antigen, the macrophages initiate the elimination of such pathogen through a process of phagocytosis. Lactoferrin is an ion binding protein. So it sequesters ion and makes it uh, unavailable to microorganisms that are required for their metabolic activities. Thank you for listening. <laughs>